your host, Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-hosts, Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, and Dave Dreyer, and I, will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm ready to get extreme. Extreme! <laughs> Times two! <laughs> uh yes we have a, that'll be the theme for tonight extreme extreme <laughs> all right also joining us this week is crystal cleveland the living dead girl how you doing i i'm great i am i'm actually really kind of excited about these movies they were two that i was looking forward to and um i guess we'll See if they delivered mm, we'll find Ooh. out if they disappointed or not and they're both halloween movies they are. They so are. that's Tricky. a good theme for this week, I guess, you know, if we were going to have that. So I, I love my Halloween movies. Yeah, as we are heading toward uh, the Halloween season, we are all genre fans are excited. This is our Christmas. Yeah, it sure is. Rounding out the crew is the one and only Dave Dreher, my co-host over at Horner's Radio. Dave, how you doing, bud? Hello. I'm good. I'm well. How's everyone? How's everyone here? Good. Glad you're here. Glad you haven't abandoned us yet. You know, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm considering yeah. it, but I'm just, yeah. <laughs> you just can't pick the locks so and can't get free. Are you ready to talk about some uh, Halloween haunts and candy corn scares? Sure. Maybe? Why not? What the hell? All right. That sounds great. We have a pair of films to review this week. The first one is Candy Corn from director John Hasty, And we also have Haunt from directors, directors, I should say, plural. Scott Beck and Brian Woods. These films are coming out soon as we are recording. Haunt is coming out on September 13th, and it will premiere on Shudder in October. And then Candy Corn is hitting VOD and Blu-ray on the 17th from Epic Pictures. This is going to be an interesting show. So let's dive into what our thoughts of these two films are. Starting off with Candy Corn, as, as I said, director John Hasty. Uh, the cast includes Tony Todd, PJ Souls, and Courtney Gaines. Yes, those might be all day players, but we'll find out. <laughs> it's Halloween <laughs> weekend, and a group of bullies are planning their annual hazing on a local outcast, Jacob Atkins. When they take things too far, he's resurrect resurrected to seek revenge against those who have wronged him. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Cleveland, let's, uh, let's start with you. What are your first thoughts of Candy Corn? Well, I, actually, there there's a lot to say about this movie. There are some things that I love, love, love about this movie. And there are only a couple things that whew, were actually a little tough to get through. So since, since we're just doing like our overview, I will say that Courtney and PJ and Todd, they're, 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 they're not just blips. They at least have uh, a couple scenes each. And uh, Courtney plays a pretty decent role in this one as the sheriff. The real MVP, though, is Dr. Death, played by Poncho Moeller. I think that was his name. I had to look it up. Mm -hmm. I loved him. He was amazing. He's a little creepy, but not too creepy. The story makes sense. It's a golem type story. The story is very simple. It's about, I guess, bullying and then getting revenge on the bullies. I think they're trying to paint Dr. Death as, as, a, as a like villain, but he's not so much a villain completely. I was like, oh, that makes sense as to why he's doing it. And Tony Todd, oh my God, I thought he was so amazing. He actually plays kind of a good guy. I mean, he's still on the bad side quote unquote i guess but he's the good out of the bat I, okay there is a good use of handheld camera work and tripod shots yeah it's it's definitely a movie i'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to keep it broad before i get into it <laughs> i'm like i'm like i want to go into some of this but i'm like uh it's I, I liked it i liked it i mean overall there's like i said there's things i really really loved and a couple of things I'll talk about later that I was just like, oh, God, so bad. But overall, I really liked it. 
And, well, it also has Sky Elobar in it. Who, oh my uh, God, the Greasy Strangler! The Greasy Strangler! Oh my God, that oh my film! God, I was so excited when I saw him. I was like, "Wait, what?" The... Oh my, yes! Okay, I'm so glad you mentioned him because obviously I had him on my list, and 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 he kind of plays the same sort of character in this too. Honestly, with the movie, I I think it was set in the '80s, is what it was supposed to be. If I don't know if y'all got that vibe, but there wasn't there were no cell phones, and then um, the phones looked really old kind of old phone um, type older type phones so i think it's like set in the 80s so he's still kind of is carrying over this little kind of 70s vibe but he's he's great yep 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. all right well let's move on to jeff moore sir what is your first impression of candy corn well you know i hold crystal's opinion in high esteem so i, I started watching this a second time the first time through i just i felt like it just wasn't quite making it now i don't know why but i think i was in kind of a critical mode the first time through uh of course i enjoyed seeing tony todd pj souls uh courtney gaines and oh sky elabar um (laughs) i love i love that y'all have seen the movie oh my god you don't know how many times i've mentioned that movie and people are like what's yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> and I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed to say watch it because then they look at me differently. <laughs> I like sort of the setup, but there was little things like the justification, I think, for uh, Dr. Death's, you know, what he does to set everything in motion. There really wasn't much there. It just sort of, he just did it. Later on, you get maybe where that was coming from. And there was a point where the music was bothering me a lot. I, it, I, <laughs> it was just like drilling. I'm, I may be quoting Dave from last week, but it felt like it was kind of drilling into my head. Now, the odd thing is when I went back and watched it a second time, that I, I didn't notice it as much. So I think I was focusing more on what I was seeing rather, rather than the music. So I'll say I'm glad I watched it. And, and I, yes. I'm, I'm a big fan of candy corn. So, uh, I'm trying not to. I, I don't want to sway you. I'm like, yes, yes, Jeff. So anyway, I, I don't know what to say other than there was some stuff that I thought was a little weak and it felt, you know, it felt low budget. And that's okay. And I, and depending on what the budget was, I think they did a pretty good job with what they had. They obviously didn't have a whole bunch of cameras and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. I think they had a – I think that, like, this movie took, like, like years a couple oh, couple really? of years to film because they were still trying to get yeah because i i mean i'd heard about it a while ago so i think they were trying to like get money incrementally in film i'm not sure that that's how it happened but yeah i know the budget was not high i think this guy's the director like isn't this his like first feature film I'm- so actually he's got a couple of feature films so his previous feature film was written by a friend of the show oh yeah at uh, honey spider Oh, I, I've never heard never of Never heard of uh, no. Honey Spider? Uh, uh-uh. That might be, might be a problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was written by Kenny uh, Caperton, who uh, he here he's a North Carolina Indian, and oh. he uh, owns uh, the Myers house here. As a, It's like a house that looks just like the Myers house out in the countryside, and he has a really cool podcast right now where he travels – around and shows fam- uh, famous movies and famous in locations in which they were filmed. Oh, that's so, cool. That sounds yeah, fun. So, yeah. So that came out uh, a few years ago, 2014, I think I'm going to have to look and see. That is correct. Uh, yeah. 2014. And then he also did a, a film in 20, 2009 called a mannequin and stack. I know nothing about that. Uh, the only reason I know about honey spider is because of Kenny. Hello, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kenny. <laughs> All right. One day, Dreher, what was your first impression of Candy Corn? Well, I I was feeling a little bit misled by this movie. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I, I'm sure this was a completely an assumption on my part, but judging from the uh, cover art and with a title like Candy Corn, I was expecting like a fun little anthology type film, you know, little, oh, little pieces of oh. fun, fun Halloween candy, you know, and I was thinking, so this thing starts off and it, it's much darker and, and brooding and yeah, so like right off the bat, I was kind of like, well, this isn't what I signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of uh, 
like uh, kind of knocked out of my seat right away with that. And then I think I'm a little bit more in uh, in Jeff's camp with this because I was just kind of, you know, it seemed to kind of suffer from its uh, financial <laughs> restrictions quite a bit for me. I do think the uh, the lead guy, Poncho Molar, was 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 pretty good as Doctor Death. It certainly kind of stole the show. The other the other three are three uh, marquee people, if you will. Really are. I mean, they're they're they're, they're day players. I mean, they really kind of are. I guess Courtney Gaines, maybe you can maybe give him not that status, but the other two just kind of pop in and out. You know, PJ is that that, that uh, Marcy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She does. She's just a receptionist or whatever, and with her eighties hair and her. Uh... <laughs> so it is the eighties, right? Like I was right. It's supposed to be set in the eighties. After I watched this, I did a little research on it and, you know, to find out. And it was actually filmed right here in Ohio. Yeah, I was going to say. Which I did not know until afterwards. So, yeah, it was actually filmed within a couple hours of me here. But, uh, yeah, overall, it was just kind of a, I mean, it's kind of your your typical resurrect from someone from the dead revenge type flick. It wasn't anything spectacular. It It isn't horribly written or directed or or any of that. It's just not nothing really this stand it out and it really honestly it, it's marketed like it which should be a much more fun film than it is and i was a little confused at the very beginning they were, they were, in, they were in that diner and they're talking about how they're gonna you know mm-hmm. yeah. that guy. it's like so what they do this to this guy every year and like why does this guy st- why does he <laughs> yeah. keep why is he still yeah. living here you know and he's mentally he, he's he seems like he's mentally handicapped right like that's what i you still think you him. think somebody would be like dude you know it's Halloween time again. You should probably get out of town. These guys are gonna are, are gonna persecute you again. So that that again, right away, it's like okay, that's just dumb, and it kind of immediately, I was like, eh, all right, it just yeah, dumb. It was just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Chris was saying that you know there's a lot to like and a lot to dislike. So I'm gonna get into that. But before I do, Dave, what did work? Anything? Uh yeah, I, I mean, I I don't want to I don't want to poop on it too much because it's again it's not a really horrible horrible film. It's just absolutely nothing stands out. I mean, as I'm sitting here talking about this, I know within about ten minutes from this, you're going to say I need a favorite scene, and I honestly I can't think of one. I really can't think of like a really scene that just jumps out that goes, yeah, this is why you should watch this movie just for this scene. Because the scene that stuck in my head is that opening scene where they're saying they're going to do this to this guy again, and I can't get over the fact that the guy is still there to let this happen to him again. So, yeah, I'm going to go with, yeah, not not much of it really stood out or worked <laughs> for oh, me. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that was not what I was fishing for, but that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all right. It honestly, is what we're here for. No, I'm happy. Like, I like when people disagree with me. It makes me happy. I don't know why. Because I'm like, yes, yes, I see a different perspective. But All right. Well, tell us, what did you see that Dave is missing? And maybe Jeff too. So I'll tell some of the good. I think the the creature was really beautiful. I think the work on him, the, the pumpkin-like fat face mask was really compelling. And I think it worked really well. It there's something about it that I liked and the the character growl kind of weird and odd and I enjoyed that as well I love Dr. Death I know I said it but I love his whole design I like his makeup I like his his costume and his his wardrobe and everything it was like I said I think it had effective use of handheld and tripod shots at different points when when the action was going on when it wasn't there was really good depth of field in in this guy in whoever is the dp or cinematographer shots and like i said tony did an amazing job poncho did an amazing job and we then we get into what i didn't like and here we go go. (laughs) every single one of the kid actors were horrible like Uh horrible like i i was quite frankly the beginning scene i actually was like oh great this is awful. Like even them, I didn't even buy them sitting at the the table having this conversation. They were, some of them overacted, and then some of them just seemed. I don't even know. I was a little. I was sad about that, and I'm sorry, but I will say something about whoever did the editing of this. There were moments where people were supposed to be upset, and and you could tell they were, but 
whoever edited it actually cut you could I could tell that they were cutting from the acting because they could they knew it was bad they knew the acting was bad at points and they cut it to another they cut the shot to someone else to like PJ or someone else so that you weren't focused on watching the bad acting so that's I I give them points for that because you got to know what you're working with and like I said this is low budget I mean I don't know the 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 acting was it, it was it was almost like it was really good or really bad and I think maybe that's part of the reason why the bad really jumps out at me also they overuse slow motion I don't know why kind of weird but there was a lot of slow motion or several slow motion shots that I honestly felt was, were unnecessary and kind of weird oddly thrown in it didn't even feel retro to me with that so that was a little odd and something that Jeff mentioned, and, and I'm not going to lie, there is a point that the music got really dramatic and it made me laugh. Okay. Yeah. And it totally took me out of the scene and made me laugh. So, so yeah, so those were uh, some of the bad things. But like I said, I overall, I just, I, I, I really liked it. I now see as far as the story to me, I didn't really get the same impression as Dave. Like for me, it was this uh, mentally, mentally handicapped adult now quote unquote adult and yeah he is bullied by these people but I don't know that he can help himself this carnival comes in and he starts working for them I found it interesting that like the sheriff and and um, Marcy you know say oh it's weird that he'd be working for him no he's a freak and he's joining his own kind that's where he feels comfortable it's basically like he found his family in them and these kids obviously bullied and and actually they beat him to death and then you know the carnival master leader brought him back i don't know it's it's a simple story it, it i didn't i guess i wasn't thinking that hard about it you know beyond <laughs> that so it sounds like it at least pushed the right buttons along the way yeah and that's what i'm saying like so so it was like some really good things and then woo yeah mm. yeah yeah so really good things, and then Wolf Jeff, is there any really good things that we should add to the list, or are you more in Dave's camp where you're like scratching your head and searching? So I thought Madison Russ as the girl student or teenager, I, I thought she did okay. And the other two guys were okay too, I guess. Caleb Thomas and Cy Creamer uh, as Steve. The other guy, not so much. Uh, I liked the mask. I did like the mask, and I thought it looked really good when they had it dressed up. There was some, you know, blood and scabby stuff. And I don't know what else on it. <laughs> <laughs> it looked a little disturbing. One shot where uh, there's some where the where the the creature or the monster does something visceral to one, and and it's sort of in slow motion. But I thought it was kind of cool because then there's a slow motion splatter behind it on the wall <laughs> like as sort of a whiplash from the what they did i i don't know i kind of like that <laughs> and crystal mentioned the editing and i i had a problem with the editing too and i felt like she thought they were cutting away from bad acting and and maybe that's what i was seeing i felt like we were lingering on actors that no longer should be in the shot <laughs> and so maybe, see, that, maybe that's the I, same I, thing i, I, I thought they were a little too long was, yeah i believe I, Watching it, I truly believe they made the right choice. <laughs> so, I'm, like, I'm like, ooh, she is not doing a good job. She is not crying. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Yep. And the, the thing that bothered me about the score was it seemed like it was uh, sort of a takeoff of a Halloween or Exorcist type store with repetitive tones, only they just didn't quite work and they were way too repetitive. Slightly minor in nature, maybe, or chromatic, but it just, they got to be too much. Well, you, you mentioned Caleb Thomas, and I was looking. He has 97 credits, which includes Zombies 2. <laughs> <laughs> well. And the upcoming clause. But Dave, you you are a fan of special effects, as we know, right? You yes. always talk about them. When the, when the, the gory of the film, the better you enjoy them. T tell us about the effects here. We talked a little bit about the uh, the monster, or the creature, or whatever you, however you want to deem it. And, and I guess you know, in retrospect, now that I'm rethinking about my viewing last night, that probably actually is the high point of the film. It seemed like some of the effects were a little 
dark to me and I'm not talking tone. I'm talking like you really couldn't see them very well. Maybe that was just a screener issue for me. Not sure. Uh, did anybody else have that issue where it seemed? Mine wasn't dark, but typically, you know, it was just the idea of the gore. Right. And you kind of right. saw the right. aftermath. Right. But no, mine, exactly. mine, was, mine was bright. But I okay. Well, and maybe that's, I, again, I might have been looking for something that they just didn't show. <laughs> you know, my mind yeah. was trying to find something that wasn't there. <laughs> so that's also a uh, potential uh, there as well. But uh, yeah, again, kind of dock everything with this movie for me. It, 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 same with the effects. It, it, it's just kind of, yeah, it's there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just nothing that really uh, stood out for me. All right. Sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's fine. No, no, that's what it no, is. No, no, well, yeah. <laughs> Let's let's wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score. And Dave, yes, you've got a uh, countdown. <laughs> the clock is ticking. Yeah, yeah, you've got to find your right. favorite scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to start off with Crystal. I liked it. And I think people should watch it. And I think it's, um, I, to, to be completely honest with you, I feel like this director has something in him. I, I think... I want to see us. I just want to see another one. I want to see a second, and I would like to see what he could do with more money. Honestly, I I think he'd you'd see a different movie if if he had more funds. And like I said, I like the story. I like the concept creation. I like the looks of the characters. So yeah, I say watch it. Uh, and I'm going to give this a three point two five. What? Yeah. That's what, what? I said. What? 3.25. What? 3.25. Yep. Yep. That, that's what I said. Yep, yep, She yep. dug it. Yep. Uh, and um, my favorite scene is the teeth pulling. I loved mm. it. Mm-hmm. It was nice and painful. All right. Just want to be a dentist. Sing, <laughs> sing the song. Sing the song. All right. <laughs> Jeff Moore, oh, when, you, when you have to rely on... Uh, Raskin and Bank. Well, no, that uh, I rank, Baskin and Rank. No, what is it? <laughs> Forget it. What? We got to move on. What? <laughs> Baskin, what? what is it? The, the, Baskin Christmas. and Robbins. No, the, the guy that did the uh, the Christmas shows. <laughs> Oh, food all three of those reindeer. Oh, oh, wow. okay. Rankin and Basque, right? Yeah, as I say, was that uh, Rankin and Basque? Yeah, 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 oh, wow. yeah. I'm, I'm not Ooh, wrong. I'm just, there. just kind of sideways. <laughs> oh. no, see, when you make elf jokes, it doesn't work. All right. So, you, so you want my final thoughts? Score? I do. Please <laughs> take it. Take it. Please. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to say this is okay. You know, and, and I think if you're you, you love seeing these. Uh, sort of uh horror royalty of a type it's worth checking that out uh i did like the idea behind it right but again i think as crystal said it's a little i think the uh what appears to be an obvious low budget hurt it and i'm giving this a two and a half all right all right and my favorite scene is when how do i i'm trying to think of the the right lead in line <laughs> Gus is uh, in the restroom spanking the monkey, and then he spills his guts. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> monkey. <Ugh. laughs> uh, if that was the appropriate person to be doing that uh, to, I, mean... said, yeah. I I wasn't lying, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and he was fantasizing about the. Uh, I, I don't know the, the waitress uh, or something. Uh, oh no, yeah, she's not a. She is a waitress. Okay, yeah. So you were saying he was tapping Johnny behind the ear? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean squeezing his earlobe and smelling it? Is that? Oh no, yeah. no, yeah. that's the wrong movie. Wrong movie. Oh, wrong movie. Wrong movie. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Well, um, that's a strange favorite scene, but let's go with it. All right, Dave, you knew it was coming. The time is now. The time is here. Uh, yes, Candy Corn, the film where the box art is better than the film. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, they're not gonna put that on the cover. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling you, <laughs> yeah that, that the bad the blurb will be great box art. Dave Durer, Gruesome Magazine. Um, <laughs> the um, yeah, uh, this movie just didn't do it for me. I, I tried maybe a second viewing would give me because it really, honestly, I really was taken out. I really was looking for something lighter, a little more fun, and because uh, I really thought that's what it was. The, the, the that's how it was sold to me. 
you know, in the packaging and everything else, I, that's what I thought I was going to get. And when it turned out to uh, attempt to be this uh, kind of uh, serious revenge thriller, uh, it's not what I wanted. Yeah, so, okay. so, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I may have been taken out of a little bit. So maybe on a second viewing. But with that being said, uh, nobody does horribly in here. I, it's it's adequately directed. It's adequately acted. The effects aren't spectacular, but they're not horrible. You know, there there there's nothing really really bad about it either. So I'm going to give this one a two point two five. Dave, Dave, it sounds like you're describing school lunch. Not <laughs> well, it kind of is. It kind of. I'm trying not to be purposely mean because it's obvious that you know I, these I people tried to yeah. tried to tried mm-hmm. to do something here, and it just yeah. wasn't my cup of tea. And I yeah, don't want to. You're saying the peas were warm. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. It. that's yeah. it. The, 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 the bread, was... the bread was a little soggy, but I could eat it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm glad it had milk. Yeah. <laughs> I exactly. That, yeah, I mean, it's, like, uh, it's like a, it's a valiant effort. That's what you're saying. That's yeah, that, yeah. That's kind of where I'm at with this one. Right. That, that's, yeah. a, that's a perfect thing with it. And as far as a favorite scene goes, I am going to go with our introduction. Uh, and again, it's just because I I really did like this uh, character, uh, the Doctor Death character, or as we could perhaps call him, the poor man's Captain Spalding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but his introduction uh, really did make an impression on me when we first meet him and we get that uh, kind of opening diatribe from him. It kind of sets the tone for his character on there. And I think, I think that's all uh, Mr. Molar, Molar, Molar. Yeah. I, 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 I said, Molar. Go for it, well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think we'll be seeing more of that particular gentleman because he really did try to carry the weight of this on his shoulders. And, the only the only reason it's getting the two point two five for me is because I did enjoy watching him perform. Okay, oh, right. that's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that is Candy Corn from director John Hasty. The cast includes Tony Todd, B.J. Souls, Courtney Gaines. It is coming to VOD and Blu-ray on September seventeenth from Epic Pictures. About the time you were listening to this, if you listen to it right away, and if you're not, what? Come on. What? Or, what? Well, what at least took you so long. Oh, okay. but but you're welcome. Come on in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right up next is haunt this is from director scott beck and brian woods the cast includes katie stevens will britton and lauren uh, lisa mccain i hope i said those right this is coming from momentum pictures it's going to be in theaters and on demand digital on september 13th friday the 13th and yeah. it will from, yes and it will wait who here. did that who did that <laughs> It was, it was Jeff. How can you not tell it was that Jeff? That was awesome. That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jeff could ever get that on. Um, yeah, uh, it premieres on Shutter October 24th. The synopsis reads, On Halloween, a group of friends encounter an extreme haunted house that promises to feed on their darkest fears. The night turns deadly as they come to the horrifying realization that some of the nightmares are real. Wow! 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 Dave, Dave, what was your first impression of Haunt? Haunt. I actually liked Haunt quite a bit. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Perhaps I shouldn't say this. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if I could have seen it better. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, yeah. I, I, again, this is. I, I mean, no disrespect towards whoever it is that provided us with the advanced screeners. It's always appreciated. Always, 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 always. But for the love of God, the water marks <laughs> on these were outrageous. I've never seen anything quite like this before. It actually made it difficult to watch the film. Well, there was actually text on there at one point, and I obviously I couldn't read it, unfortunately. So I have to agree with you there. Yeah, and so thankful. so definitely too. But I, I'm looking forward to this one coming out on the shutter, so I can actually see it and watch it. I love that you call it the shutter. I'm the just shutter. Saying, the, the shutter. The it's shutter. not shutter, it's the shutter. The shutter. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so <laughs> when, it, when it shows up there on that shutter thing, I'm looking forward to seeing it again because I thought this was a, a really uh, – we've seen quite a few of these extreme haunt type of films. So uh, to kind of give us something we haven't seen or the, even something we've seen before but will hold our interest again is quite the achievement. And I really think this did that. I, I felt true menace in this film on several different occasions. You know, again, our people are kind of dumb. I mean, seriously, when you're sitting along the side of the road and the light just pops on 
<laughs> 10 feet from where you're at. And you're like, oh, yeah, let's go there. That's good. Yeah, that'll work for us. And you actually do it. You're not dealing with uh, mental giants here. <laughs> but even that worked. I even kind of like that part of it. So, yeah, my overall first impression is Haunts a Keeper. Haunts a Keeper. I like that. That that could be on the box. Mm-hmm. That could be on the box. Yeah, mm-hmm. that could be on the box. Jeff, more, sir. What is your first impression of Haunt? I enjoyed this as well. And I think uh, menace, tension, apprehension, those are the, the key words. Yeah, the setup and getting there was sort of like all of a sudden uh, they they had this weird thing set up where they thought this pickup was following them. And then, I don't know, all of a sudden these lights come up and they go there and then they go in. So from that point on, I I really enjoyed it. It doesn't take too long and they figure out this is not going well, especially when uh, one of their party disappears and then they see something happen to them. That's when it they get really ramped up, right? So, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. And the extreme haunters, those guys were nasty. Nasty haunters. <laughs> uh, they some bad nasty. clowns. They some bad clowns. Yeah, yeah. And, nasty. you know. When, oh, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, so I won't. Uh, but, <laughs> wow. Teaser. Or, Go ahead. All right. Well, there's some interesting things behind the mask. Let's put it that way. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it. And the acting I thought was good, too. The lead, Katie Stevens as Harper, I thought did a good job. She was, as often is, you know, we kind of focus on one person who actually is apprehensive about this whole thing and, and just gets sucked in by everybody. <laughs> So anyway, good one, good one, and it and it had me uh, holding my breath. Holding your breath. Well, that's a good sign. Yeah, it's a good sign. All right, Miss Crystal, what is your first impression of Haunt? I liked it too. I I feel like uh, yeah, I didn't have I didn't have much of a problem with the story. You know, with them being so dumb. I mean, they are. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I mean, obviously clearly they were dumb. I mean, that's just, but I mean, they're college kids, you know, I mean, eh, fine, whatever. And then, you know, there was an abusive boyfriend. So, cause for a second there, I'm like, what is the thing with the truck? I didn't really get it. And I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. That's a whole separate side to this. I feel like it started off a little slow. Okay. To be completely honest with you, but not bad. Okay, not bad. Just a little slow. I, I, you know, I mean, I like a lot. I like horror and I like to be scared and I like gore and I like all that stuff. So I was kind of ready for it. And it did deliver. I feel like it was it was well done. And yes, I agree. All the acting I liked, I enjoyed. I didn't have a problem with any of them. I felt like, you know, there was good chemistry between the two leads. And I feel like the haunted haunters the haunters is what we would call them and you know the haunting haunted house business the haunters were yeah creepy and weird it's just so unfortunate though the direction the only thing that that's the the only thing that i have an issue with is that it basically says to people oh this is kind of a little spoiler maybe but it's got to be said that people who decide to change their look are bad or weird that's the only part that bothered me you know they're gonna oh okay so because i want to get tattoos on my face i'm gonna go murk people but that's all other than that i like the movie a lot too Mm -hmm. oh yeah and they had spider vodka in there which i think is really random and weird but is that real by the way i don't know i have no idea yeah. Okay. I got to figure. If it isn't, it should out. be right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, the directors Scott Beck and Brian Woods, who are also uh, the writers of this, are quite prolific, and uh, they are responsible for a Quiet Place. Oh wow! Oh, really? oh that's right. That's wasn't, right. I forgot. Wasn't all expecting about to that. hear that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Me neither. They are actually from I think uh, Davenport or Dubuque, Iowa. Oh well, there you go. That explains a lot. I got to I got to watch out for this Midwesterners. <laughs> uh, and they also did a film called Nightlight recently. Um, oh yeah, I saw. I recently by 2015. <laughs> uh, that was the uh, found footage one with the uh, flashlights, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, I remember we, that one. Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, just to kind of share that, that that's it's got some, I don't know, is the word pedigree too big a word for that? But it's, no, it's uh, a quiet place is huge. Yeah. That's 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 big. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you see the subtlety of quiet place in here. Do you? No. No, no. <laughs> so this, is, this is a this is a different beast altogether. Yeah, 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 that's what definitely. I was going to say. I don't think you know you wouldn't put these two together uh, naturally, but there you go. Uh, Eli Roth is one of the producers. Now, uh, I I see that. I've seen yeah, that. I can see that. So I was going to ask you, Dave. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going. Is does do you feel like Eli Roth should be attached to this film? Yeah, well, you know, it's really, they do it kind of quiet. I mean, it's not like that they, you know, it's it's plastered on the front, Eli Roth presents or anything. If you're not looking for it, I mean, you don't really know until, yeah. the, uh, until the credits roll. And, you know, he, he's kind of, at least for me, he's kind of taken a step back. You know, he was really pushing himself as, you know, he's the future of horror and he's the new generation of horror. And I think he's seen that wasn't working for him. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to step back here in the shadows a little bit and, uh, you know, kind of change people's perception of me because he's done some pretty decent behind the scenes stuff these last four or five years he has and then of course he stretched his wings with the the, uh, a air quotes family horror film last year right right exactly exactly house with a clock in its walls yeah house with a clock in its walls yes so yeah he's kind of uh he's kind of pulled back and uh quit pushing the you know, new generation of horror legend type thing. And I think that's working for him much better. Yeah. Than... <laughs> yeah. I, I have to agree. I didn't, I mean, a lot of people don't like Eli because they think he relies too much on gore. And I personally love gore. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I know Dave does. So, I mean, yeah, I feel absolutely. Up, my, yeah. my opinion of him kind of changed when he was in the, in glorious bastards, quite frankly. Oh, yes. Made, uh, oh, you know, I was like, man, this guy can fucking act. I mean, he yeah. can, you know, he really can act. And since then, my opinion of him has kind of changed. Now, it was right about the same time he, you know, got out of that whole hostile thing that he was in. And it's kind of working for him. So, no, to answer your question, that was kind of a roundabout answer, Doc. But, no, I don't think his involvement in this uh, hampers the film in any way. Uh, well, or or amplifies. It doesn't have to hamper it. Could, yeah. If you see his touch or if he's just a name. That threw some money at it. So, <laughs> In, anywho, let's let's talk about something that Jeff said that I found fascinating. That you said you were actually if, uh, holding your breath, or at least found yourself gasping. Tell us a little bit more about that. What? How were the tent scenes, and how many of them were there? Oh, I didn't count my breath, but uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's hard. To, it's hard to count your breath. That's very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just to, to go back to what I said before, Brian Woods is from Davenport, Iowa, and the other gentleman went to University of Iowa. So I'm assuming that's how they met. But anyway, you know, this is by nature of the story in these extreme haunts. You're put in situations where you don't know, you know, what's behind the curtain. So there are scenes where they're reaching through holes, you know, the old, you feel something and what, what is it? Guess the body part. Yeah. Guess the body part kind of thing. There's scenes where they're crawling down like a chute, almost like three by three foot or something. That's a little bit of a maze and you don't know what's around the corner or if something's going to pop out or if something's or you're going to drop out. There's one scene where they're, in a hallway with lots and lots of uh, what could be people. You just don't know if any of them might all of a sudden, I don't know. It, it was just stuff like that, I think. And and then when some of them were in obvious danger and you don't know exactly what's going to happen to them, you know, at least I do, I kind of hold my breath thinking, oh no, oh no, what are they going to do? You know, that, that that's kind of the, the general feel. I don't. I don't know if I answered your question or not. For me, but that's <laughs> just the the nature of that business, the nature of that uh, topic. I think lends itself to that. You don't know what's around the corner, or what's going to jump out at you, or what's going to. And you, and wh- especially once you know that it's not just an extreme haunt, they're out to get you. <laughs> well, well, Crystal, are you a fan of haunted mazes, or in this case, extreme haunts? Or where, oh, where, where yeah. does your, where's your oh, fandom yeah. stop? Oh, yeah. No, no, my fandom doesn't stop. No, I love haunted houses, but they get mad at me because I laugh. 
So typically <laughs> I nice. get in trouble. Now, I mean, it doesn't mean I can't be scared by a jump scare or something like that. And that's why I love them because there's still always the potential. It's just that typically, you know, it's coming, you know, because I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, it's time, it's ready. But yeah, I love this. sort. I love that sort of stuff. And I have lots of friends who are in the haunted house business. And yeah, I, I wish there was more. I actually, I actually saw some for North Carolina here on Facebook or something today. And I was like, Oh, I wonder if that one's really good. Cause I love being scared, but um, I've got to admit, uh, I may be a little stupid, but I would not be going into this haunted house. No. <laughs> it was just, just even, even the front of the house when they yeah. or, front of the house quote unquote house like the way they had to get in i'm like nah nah guys what the nah nah just turn well the, around. The, the the first the first clue <laughs> that it's something not good is when they don't charge you to enter i was like <laughs> i was like they're they're not having to buy anything i mean i don't know what is down there but like a haunted houses up here are like 40 fucking dollars a person to get in so you know as, as soon as they didn't ask for money i was like i ain't going in that damn place nope <laughs> not happening yeah, yeah, and yeah, and the fact that there weren't crowds. Yeah, yeah, no crowd, no crowds. Uh, Dave, we've been uh, reviewing a number of you know these extreme haunts, right? The the one that comes to mind is the uh, houses that yeah, houses October built, yeah. October built. Yes, thank you for clearing that up for me. How does this one sit in that sub sub genre? I think it nestles in there real nice. That's what I mentioned uh, when I was first speaking about this. It, it's kind of a uh, kind of like found footage was at one point. It's kind of getting a little oversaturated. So for them to be able to still hold our interest and show us some things, maybe a storyline that's you know just different enough to still make us want to to sit through it. That that that's quite the achievement, I think. You know, because you kind of know what you're going in for these things. In extreme haunt, you know, things are just going to go badly, and you know, someone's going to die, and you know, I mean, they're all kind of the, they're all kind of the same. I mean, there's not only so, so many things you can do with that storyline, but I, I think Haunt here, you know, they, they managed to take us on a little bit of a different journey and, you know, it worked for me. Like I said, the, the, the tension and the malice was palpable. You could, you could feel it. I was like, Jeff, I, I wasn't counting my breath, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I was feeling nervous for what lay ahead for our, our gang of intrepid uh, haunters. Well, let's talk about our gang of in, intrepid haunters. Or I think you're talking about the those who are visiting the haunt, not the yes, ones that yes, are haunting yeah. the haunt. I guess uh, they'd be hauntees. The hauntees, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Jeff, cast, how, how, how did they do? I thought they did very well. Although the one guy that's introduced, Ethan, is introduced at this party, and he seems like a total ass. Dick. He's a, a douche at first, right? <laughs> yeah, I was at the like, party, like, but then later ah. on he turns out okay, kind of, as they're going actually, through the haunt, I thought. Yeah, I think he actually turned out wonderful. I think he was... Yeah, he offers to drive him to this to a, an street, to a haunt, and then uh, puts up his, like, uh, you know, whatever their generic version of Uber oh or Lyft yeah. was, yeah. and starts giving him drinks <laughs> and stuff, and the other guy goes, you're not actually going to charge us for this, are you? <laughs> So, yeah, I, th I thought they all did a very good job. There's, uh, what, four basic ones? One of them leaves pretty quick. Um, Mallory. It seems like there's... There's six. When, when they first yeah, enter the haunt, there's six of them. Yeah. More, yeah. yeah, there's four four chicks and two dudes when they first go in. Yeah, yeah. So Harper, Bailey, and... Yeah, yeah. You're right. Angela and Mallory. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Line, line them up one by one. <laughs> That's basically, yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. Well, we talked about the trailer for this on H&R, and one of the things that we mentioned is we love the line, do you want to see my face? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, Crystal, does that pay off? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what's awesome about it is, I mean, obviously, you know, there's going to be something weird or whatever. And Honestly, their faces completely make sense to the story. And each person ugh, looks so individual. I, okay, so I loved that part of it. I loved the, their look. And they're very interesting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it totally pays off. And yep. one in particular really, ooh, really messed with me. I was like, nah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have, we have things like, 
cast members is uh, called a uh, ghost clown witch the vampire ghost, devil the ghost, zombie. the ghost the ghost the ghost get, get oh, yeah. rid of that ghost that ghost has got yeah the ghost was the freakiest one the clown wasn't too bad either <laughs> yeah yeah it's like a, yeah no but they were all good and individual i mean i think it was cool and i love I really liked and enjoyed the concept of earning your face. I think that's a cool little earning your face, a cool little weird thing, you know, that, yeah. An inclusive thing that, you know, it's it's hard to say how they did in terms of acting doc, because for the most part, they don't say anything and they just stand stare at them until, you know, Oh, the the bad guys. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Except for ghost. He talks to him a little bit. Yeah. Ghost. And then, yeah. But even when he talks, I mean, you still, he doesn't take, you know, he doesn't take the mask off. He's still creepy as shit. Yeah. uh, You know, they want to trust him because he's the only game in town, but, uh, (laughs) that's true. I mean, you know, what do you got? But you know, what's interesting is like you, you take that trust and then someone else comes along and you trust them too. I'm like, Wait, what? Did we not learn a lesson here? Did we not learn a lesson with that? You know what I'm talking about? Like, with, I was like, that was weird. Didn't you think that was kind of weird? That really shows their stupidity. And then <laughs> at the end, there's a turnaround and someone is a damn genius. Well, some, somebody's got to start it rich, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to throw in a comment, too, about the, the watermark, I think – Towards the beginning, there was stuff that happened that I didn't get because the watermark cupped it up. Yeah, that, that thing was She, that she thing gets was a huge. text on her phone. That was yes, a, that's what I was saying. You couldn't read it. And and you couldn't tell what it was <laughs> or anything, you know. Oh, uh, the, the tirades of the trade. That's what we have to deal with. Let's wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, and favorite scene for Haunt. It sounds like uh, it's been doing really well in the film festivals, and it sounds like it did really well here. But let's find out. Dave Dreyer, start us off. I enjoyed Haunt. Uh, like I said, I am looking forward to seeing it without the uh, menacing watermarks all over it. I think I'm going to enjoy it quite a bit more, actually, when that uh, moment arrives. Uh, yeah, overall, it, it's kind of fun. It, it's menacing. It's it, it's actually kind of spooky at times. The witch's little uh, chamber of death there that, <laughs> that that we get when you see the witch, you know bad things are going to happen. You know, it all just kind of worked for me. It really did. I like the individual characters. I it it all just kind of flowed very very nicely for me. Mm-hmm. Favorite scene being the the gore guy it it always seems odd when i pick a non-gory scene but i really enjoyed the scene where they came into that room where they had the three coffins oh yeah that they they could walk through and and just how they figure out that you know the door has to be closed for the other door to open and then our one girl gets in there and the door doesn't open but the top opens and you know the little Mm -mm, creepy mm -mm. gets thrown on top of them nah Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that scene a lot. I thought it was it was just really well executed all the way around. Because I would, I'm pretty sure I can pretty much guarantee you that if that happened to me, I would in fact shit myself. So, you know, so uh, I'm going to go with that for the favorite scene, and I'm going to give Haunt a uh, precursory three and a half. I, I think it might actually score better when I can actually see it instead of just seeing a giant entertainment one across the <laughs> across the screen. Mm. Gonna go three and a half right now. Three and a half. It sounds like it has the potential to be on your top ten. Uh yeah. It, perhaps it could. I don't I, I don't know. We've we've been getting some pretty uh some pretty decent flicks of late. The that top ten is fluctuating around a little bit. But yeah, it could. It it, it could potentially be a little bit there. Yeah, the bottom spots are, you know, they, yeah, they, they, can, they can they can change at a whim. Yeah. All right. <laughs> up up next is Jeff Moore. Jeff Moore, what is your final thoughts, your score, and favorite scene for Hunt? Okay, I like this. Mm. Just kind of all around good. Uh, the setup was, you know, we, we talked about this being a subgenre, but I think this is uh, unique in kind of the way it unfolds and what they do and how they try to get out of it. They're pretty proactive, and it feels like they're getting somewhere. You just never know for sure. Uh, so anyway, it, it's I, I'm kind of with Dave. I'm going to look forward to seeing this. And again, you know, I, I understand the need for watermarks, but this one was out of control. Um, it was extreme. It was extreme. <laughs> oh, uh, that's bad news. Three point five. I was. I got it written down oh. here. So My, here. me too. Yeah, I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go for sort of the first shocker, I guess. And I'm just going to say the scene where when, when Mallory is unwrapped. Unwrapped. Oh, oh, dear. oh, oh dear. Yeah, that oh, was dear. good. Yeah. Oh, 
All right. Thank you, Jeff. Up next is Crystal. Crystal, what is your final thoughts, your score and favorite scene for Haunt? Well, you already heard my score. Yes, mine's a three and a half, too. We all had the same one. At the, with, with Dave's up. Yeah. Oh, my God. We all did the same. Yay. Yeah, I definitely think it's cool. It's a cool movie. I think people will really like it. I think it could inspire some really fun Halloween costumes, too, which is always fun. Yeah, watch it. Definitely, definitely see it. And for me, my favorite scene oh my god actually there's a lot there's quite a bit of gore so that makes me very happy but uh, yeah oh god which one okay it's when ghost face takes a pickaxe to someone's face and like well puts it in it, it goes into the mouth and then he pulls up and Ooh, mm, yeah 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 yeah, it was really graphic. It was great. You're in, into the teeth thing this time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a theme there, too. Yay, yeah. Halloween teeth. Deadly dentures. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like we liked Haunt, so check it out. It's from directors Scott Beck and Brian Woods. It is being released from Momentum Pictures on September 13th. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting to two dates confused. It will be in theaters on demand and digital on that Friday. And then if you hang on, uh, it will appear on Shutter October 24th. Either way. Yeah. You nice. It. That'll, be a, that'll be a good uh, Halloween yes, week can. watch. Yeah. yeah, I'll definitely watch it again. All right. Perfect. I can't wait. Can't wait. All right. We reviewed Candy Corn and Haunt. That was our reviews. Check them out. And we want to hear what your thoughts are. You can reach out to us at... Feedback at gruesomemagazine.com is the email address. You can go to Facebook and join our Gruesome Magazine Horror News Radio group, or you can go to gruesomemagazine.com and leave your comments on the blog post for this podcast. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Dave! <laughs> yeah. Crystal, thank you for joining me. Thank oh, you for having oh, the pleasure Yay. was all mine. All right, let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Crusoe Magazine.